report a lot of teams dissed us yeah. about a, a month ago. Well, the, for rightful reason, on January 31st, Vanderbilt got beat 101 to 44 at Alabama. Since then, they've won 10 of 11. They'll play that card as we are underway. Vanderbilt in the black uniforms, AM in the white. Smith drives, he kicks. Here's your first three of the game. And it comes up just a little bit short. That was Tyron Lawrence. Take a look at today's starting lineup. They're brought to you by CDW. Taylor and Bradford outstanding. Marble and Coleman look like they were separated at birth. They are both just huge physical bodies. And Dexter Dennis is a very good outside shooter. And a trace it off the window. Offensive foul at Wilmot Count. Henry Coleman. As big as Coleman is, he has driver instincts from that forward position. Good job by Vanderbilt to scout it out, get the foul call early. Take a look at the Vanderbilt lineup, also presented to us by CDW. Quentin Melora Brown is a fifth-year senior who started his career at Rice. Ezra Munyon is really the shooter. 25 points yesterday against Kentucky, and he was 8 of 11. Yeah, five in black is as fast of a guard that we have in the SEC, this kid with the ball. Loose ball and Marble and his running mate both went for it and they come up with it. Taylor kicks reverse, no good. Yeah, Marble and Coleman look like two defensive ends in the SEC as years. much as anything. And it looks like they call Ezra Monyon with a carry. And he has been so good, so clean with the ball. SEC play average five assists to one turnover Unreal number for a team that plays fast on offense and a lot of Zakai Ziegler uh, yeah. Irie Appleby in him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I like the Appleby But he is one of those guards that has just a different gear Marble jump hook and that's a good one over Melora Brown. We know AM does not shoot the ball well from three. They're towards the bottom in the country, but man, do they drive the ball and get fouled. They set the rules of the game early by attacking the paint off the bounce, off the pass. Jordan Wright, a senior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, came off the bench during most of the conference play. There's another turnover here. And he got a starting role after that season ending injury to Liam Robbins. And at the time, that felt like this is devastating. How are we ever going to bounce back? They did change their identity when when that guy went out. Well, he has to sit in the end zone because that uh, leg is not in the cast yet. The defensive player of the year in the SEC and a double-figure score, a huge blow to Vanderbilt. Marble takes advantage of his strength and goes right over Melora Brown again. He's got four early ones. Those are the type of shots that Liam Robin would not let you get off. In front of that restricted arc. Three straight turnovers to start. To Vanderbilt. This is an open three. Wide open three. In and out. in advance last night only one out of ten from the three-point line against Arkansas that is just not their strength that three is a hard one off the back iron so Vanderbilt still looking to get its footing as Boots Radford launches from three and that's a splashdown A&M up seven early it's not their strength but they will make about five or six per game Wade Taylor and Radford are the primary threats from distance Good job by Radford, man, to sprint to that high slot, have his feet set on the catch. Vanderbilt trailed for Arkansas 14-4 last night. Uh, Lawrence out top, one-on-one -on -one with Taylor. He'll kick right, one more pass. That one finds the bottom. The extra pass to Colin Smith, the four-star recruit out of Dallas, Texas. Ravi was simple middle ball screen by Vanderbilt. They popped the shooter right. You have to come out of the corner to take away his three. Leaves an uncovered shooter with that extra pass. 
Collins missed that guy that during practice and shoot arounds may make none of them, but Stackhouse has said about him, I'd rather have a guy that's got it at 7.30 than one who looks good at 10.30 in the morning. I like that. Red light guys. Dennis puts one up. That's him too. Blue guy of the year in this league for everything that he does. One of the best defenders in the league. Rebounds the ball. Makes tough shots. Fits the DNA of Buzz Williams out of the transfer portal. He made him one of the great players in North Carolina basketball history. And a super NBA player. Marty, you were in that huddle. How intense was it? Well, going back to the set there, Ravi, you, you didn't see any smiles on Stack's no, face don't. right there no, either. No. You saw how animated he was there in the huddle talking to his guys. He said, quit letting a &M dictate the pace of this game. Get into them defensively and make them get downhill. Extremely animated. Yeah, good pass. Dennis comes up a little short. And the run out one. Oh, look out right into the defender. No foul was called. There's a whole bunch of contact and no whistle. You don't play 18 years in the NBA and a two-time NBA All-Star if you're not a fierce competitor. And Jerry Stackhouse is. He was serious last night with our guys up on the, in the studio. Wade Taylor knocks the three down. He was very serious. That's the look right there. He yep. walked off the set with that look on his face. One of three head coaches in college ball to begin the weekend. It was also a top three pick. In the NBA draft, Patrick Ewing got let go at Georgetown, Penny Hardaway at Memphis. And this guy is all about winning. He has a tremendous job of building his culture. There's a hard hit that doesn't get called, and Dexter Dennis, <laughs> former best defender in his league out of the American Athletic Conference, has been a perfect fit for the DNA of Buzz Williams and his guys. Monyong got buried too by marble underneath the game is going to be physical it has to allow to be physical it just doesn't want to cross over the line of being rough so important rather for the three officials to settle in and see the game the same way early in the ball game mm. quick take Manuel can't get it to go rebound up and oh. nope we're gonna have a shot clock violation didn't hit the rim Fifth turnover to start the game for Vanderbilt and the Aggies are a disruptive defensive club and I think in Buzz sometimes tries to downplay his talent. But you look at a guy like Wade Taylor, Boots Radford, Coleman transferred from Duke. Marble transferred from Michigan State. But he's got players now. Good box out by Laura Brown. A couple of substitutes in the game for the Aggies AM. Anderson Garcia, who's on the ball now. Terrific rebounder. The best of speed, great bounce pass inside, and Laura Brown finishes. How about the presence and the vision of Wright, man, with a little bit of a shot fake. At the last second, found the Laura Brown. Brown did a good job of showing his number 42 and presenting it well. Mm. Equally good pass on a dish, and you can see right to his eyes. Goes Wade Taylor, best point guard in the league. And I think there's some separation between him and anyone else you want to throw in that conversation for everything that this kid does. Give him credit. It wasn't always that way. He has no. really improved. We love a good pass, don't we? Yeah, I do. And watch Jordan Wright just the last second. I, I credit Malora Brown to score up and show his, num show his numbers. Wade Taylor knew the entire time that Coleman was sitting on that backside, very much like what Alabama did in our first game. They drive one pipe, but they're always looking for what's on the backside of my drive. Really well done and executed by the Aggies. Stackhouse has gone to his bench now. He never met a three-point shot. He didn't like Miles Studi into the game. He's number 10. Thomas into the game 12. That's Lee Dort underneath, big fella. And that ball is now going to go to A&M. Now, you mentioned Studi checks in, number 10 in black. A primary three-point weapon all year long. But in this building, only one out of 13 from the three-point line so far in this tournament. A lot of people asking that question. I can answer it. They forgot to defend. Yeah. That's what cost them all season long. And what bothers you and knocks you out in regular season will cost you in postseason. It will be Kentucky's defense once again is the issue. Yep. Garcia. Whole bunch of head faking and finally kicks it into the corner for a would be three. Now double team again from Vanderbilt. How about Taylor? And there's that rebounding machine. But what an effort. 
We talk about Anderson Garcia the same way you talk about Tobe Awaka from Tennessee. He just comes in and he finds the ball. One rebound every three and a half minutes that he's on the floor. <laughs> he's a specialist. Kind of a Dennis Rodman type role for Texas A&M in so many ways. That culture of Texas A&M, it's so good, so true, so honest with one another, and that's always a threat. Radford's a big physical guard. If you put a small guard on him, they'll put him right in front of the restricted arc for the easy alley -oop. Right over Trey Thomas. Yeah. He and Paul Lewis now in the backcourt along with Studi. Byron Lawrence and Lee Dort. Vanderbilt down 16-5 early. Judy 0 for 5 from three-point range last night. He made seven, though, in a game against A&M earlier. There's Dort, and that's another shot clock violation. Maybe that Texas A&M switching man-to-man -man defense. They want to get you standing around like you're running zone offense. But the majority possessions for Texas A&M, when they go that look, they're just switching out everything. It does resemble a zone. They want to make you think it is. You've got to move and cut and set screens, run more offense offensively than your zone offense. 15 trips, seven turnovers already for Vanderbilt. Yeah, they get two field goals and seven turnovers. Quick shot there with 10 on the shot clock, and hit one goes down. Everything working right now for AM. Andre Gordon, the senior out of Sydney, Ohio. You know what they're playing like? A two seed. <laughs> They're the second best team all year long in the SEC. Aggressive pack of dogs on the defensive end. Drive it with a purpose offensively. Their energy level is relentless. Has been all year. Pull up two, no good. A rip rebound by Mr. Rebounder Anderson Garcia. Bradford to the rack. A little bounce pass that gets deflected out of bounds and you can see his teammate Henry Coleman because I know the quality of teams yeah. that they have beaten in this league winning 10 of their last 11 and you and I are in this league more than anybody and the quality of wins they have with the Kentuckys, the Tennessees, Alabama we know how good they are the numbers just aren't quite there yet to solidify it now the follow up is put back up and in by Dort so again I still don't have a seat there uh, Carl is still awaiting uh, to get someone on the jet, but I, I couldn't help but notice Jimmy's hat there as uh, Texas a and hits yet another three-pointer. Jimmy, that, you look like Smash Williams and Matt Saracen serving ice cream at the Alamo Freeze. <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Smash Williams. <laughs> Smash, Smash Williams hat, reference. Brother. Very well done. <laughs> oh, good ad, Marty. Well done. You're welcome, America. You're welcome. Here we go. Radford's got Coleman with him, and he gives it to him for oh, the dunk. <laughs> Awfully impressive start for Texas A&M. The Aggies are shooting 65% from the floor, 9 of 14. I described their defense as a pack of hungry dogs, and that's, that's what they are. Their hands are so active, they talk loud. Constantly bothering the basketball and they can stay in front of the ball probably about as well as anybody in this league They've gotten a nice contribution from the bench too And there's the first time that the layup has been able to be converted by Ezra Mignon Your best offense if you're Vanderbilt is keeping that ball in the middle part of the floor because the Aggies are so good at Loading to the ball side take away the help get Mignon downhill good action Gordon and Garcia off the pine for the Aggies have been terrific. Radford sets up for a three. That goes down. And they are very comfortable right now in the uniform. Looking at a very confident bunch that lost in the tournament final last year. Won a chance to get back. Obviously, had they won last year, they'd be in the NCAA tournament. They lost to Tennessee, and they did not get into the tournament. It's Studi. Knocks down a three. Yes, Tutti cannot have another one out of seven, one out of eight three-point game if Vanderbilt has any chance of getting back in this thing. He's too valuable from that perimeter. 15-point lead. Remember, they trailed Arkansas by 13 in Ward back. 
Arkansas forgot all about their defense as Gordon pulls up and he buries one. This team is on fire right now. When they are making wood twos, not two-point shots in the normal painted area, but the wood twos, they are at their best. You know they're going to drive it. You know they're going to get fouled. They can make just enough threes, and they get that mid-range going. Very difficult to handle. They've made six in a row and now are shooting 70%. And four substitutions coming in for Buzz Williams when we get to the break. Studi, a little short of a straight on line. The rip rebound by Dennis. What I love about Dexter Dennis, he's compliant in terms of he's a real pleaser, but he is tough as nails. And not many guys you can say both about compliant and tough. And zero in white is that to a T, tucked away in that top corner right now. Here goes your guy, and he lost it on the way up. Compliance sounds like something a coach just wants his players to be. Can you just be compliant? Yes. I, I, I talked to you a lot about that off the year. <laughs> but Dexter Dennis is that. He transferred in. And think about it. He didn't transfer in with, with like 11 other transfers. This roster was already built. He had to come in and carve out his space, carve out his purpose. But you talked to that A&M staff from day one. They said this kid came in and said, what do you want me to do to help us win? But man, is he tough. My glue guy of the year in the SEC, Dexter Dennis. Wichita State, a 77% free throw shooter. He misses that. Wholesale substitutions coming in. Hayden Hefner, the 6'6 junior out of Texas. Good shooter number two. Marble, Taylor on the floor. Solomon Washington for the first time in for the Aggies. 17 point lead with eight to go. Ravi, going back to the transfer portal that Buzz went into to get Dexter Dennis. There's zero tolerance with him as a head coach if you're not our kind of guy. Okay, G. Yeah, he has a description for it. If you don't fit, that phone call is not going to get returned if you show interest in Texas A&M. Under 10 on the shot clock. Kick three, open three. In and out. Good, soft shot by Lawrence, but he couldn't get it to go. He had 18 last night against Kentucky, and the long pass is picked off. Well, when you miss the shot, you may as well get back and try to steal one, and he did. Well, then he's going to have to fight. We knew that coming in, but they dug themselves a hole early. And they find offense. Normally it's with a three-point shot. They would, they would trade the lead. They trade the win. Absolutely. Right. Healthy Marcus Sasha. That did not look good. All right, guys, thank you. We'll see you at the half. And, of course, we got a lot more games coming up. The Big 12 championship game is at 6 Eastern for the ACC New York Life ACC title game, 8.30, 10.30, the Pac-12 championship game. That's later tonight on ESPN and the app. Yeah, another one seed with a – could be a devastating injury. Think about Jalen Clark. UCLA out. Yeah. We're calling Gillespie his biggest player of the year. And he went out with, I think, three games for the NCAA tournament. Picked them from a national championship contender. They got lost in the Sweet 16. Man, stay away from injuries this week, right? Right now, the size of AM is taking its toll on Vanderbilt. And their guards, who were so good last night making shots, they got to get another one off quickly or another violation. They throw it up, and that's an air ball. Is that their third shot clock violation of the first half? That is suffocating defense by Texas A&M with wicked, wicked ball pressure. They keep track of can we get three stops in a row. They call it a turkey, does Texas A&M. Actually, the Texas A&M band down here have turkey hats on, understanding how the Aggies emphasize the defensive we, end of the floor. We, we, we gotta, gotta get, get you in one of those. Marty, can you get a hat on? We gotta this guy? get you in one of those. I bet Marky, knowing Marty, he's got a turkey hat or two. Well, Marble's been able to have his way, and now he knocks down a jump shot. He's got eight. Scoring with ease, right? Texas A&M just with ease. Well, they made eight field goals in a row. That's yeah. how you quickly get to 34. Marble, of course, the Michigan State transfer.
Texas A&M Ravi so good at many things defensively, but their ability to switch to immediate deny Probably doesn't get talked about enough. You watch them when they switch one through five. They switch boom, but right back to that hard pressure denial position at all five spots. Marble getting into a good battle with Melora Brown. That's an offensive foul. Yeah, Vanderbilt's guarding themselves a little bit too. What do, what do I mean by that? They're not getting the ball reversed. Texas A&M is a no middle defense And they keep you on the sideline as well as anybody in this league You got to fight to get the ball reversed if you're Vanderbilt Not guard yourself 20 point cushion 10 turnovers for Vanderbilt six made baskets Again, Marble, yes, so well, it's his day today. Got to get a shot like that to drop. Julius Marble into double figures. He's got 10 points. Vanderbilt has four more. Where's your offense come from? You can't squeeze off threes, which is the lifeblood of Vanderbilt's offense. What do you do to get one? Take a guarded three from distance. Just settling right now. Vanderbilt offensively. Hafner all the way to the basket, left hand, no good. And we'll go the other way. Yeah, to your point, last night the Vandy starting guards went 21 of 36. They're 2 of 11 right now. Just switching all the movement, Texas A&M. All five guys pointing, switching, talking. Still putting pressure on the ball. Not easy to do when you're switching at all five spots, but they switch high, they switch hot. Constant pressure. Sure is, and right mind you, have nowhere to go. Lawrence stepped out of bounds. Another turnover. What that pressure does to you, you, you step that foot back to try to get a little extra speed into your attack, and you step right out of bounds. Jerry Stackhouse, you know his mind is thinking, what do I have to do? Because he's as good of an offensive mind as this league has. Every coach in this league will tell you that. The Buzz's guy is not allowing that ball to be reversed, has taken everything away. Same way that Tennessee got bothered by not having Ziegler on the floor, not having Liam Robbins with these two guys, Randall and Coleman. And that will be an offensive foul on Randall. He's Shocked that KB Burdett made that call, but that's what holes to Red Panda while you are gonna get on the unicycle. Well done by the guys up there, Derry, Fish, Farney. <laughs> right Where, where's Scooby the dog, the huh? Chihuahua that goes from one basketball to the other? That that was my point. Is I could do Red Panda much easier than I could do stepping from one basketball to the other. Well, don't fall down back <laughs> Man, look at Vanderbilt. 11 turnovers in the game, only six made shots. On your own. There you oh, go. Huh. Allen Iverson there as he darts through the defense. Good call by you. He does have another gear now that very few have in this league. Can you get him downhill more, though? Mm. The question is the answer. You're, you're going to have a hard time beating a team shooting 76%. How about 16 for 21 for AM? That's unheard of. Converted 10 straight trips. What a difference a year makes, huh? For Texas A&M a year ago, they were sweating it out in the semifinals on their way to the finals. Still couldn't get in the tournament, and now they come here just trying to prove their seed in the NCAA. There's some more of that tenacious defense. Manion got deep, and then there was a lot of A&M arms. Another? Wow. Yes, sir! Wow! Wade Taylor! 42 to 16, Jimmy. That three goes and need it. They need everyone. They need those to count for six. Well, they need to get stopped somehow Vanderbilt They've been a really good offense this year Vanderbilt has but defensively their numbers not what you want overall 
Colin Smith has two of the three three-point field goals. Bailey's defense on the season, number 158 in the country. They're coming in the top 25 offense. But their inability to get stops has been an issue at long stretches this year. Now, they've won 10 out of 11. They've beaten teams that will be in the NCAA tournament for sure, but for the Aggies, having their way. Time Jordan right with a good take. The best action for Vanderbilt has been in the middle third of the floor. Keeping the ball off the sidelines, taking away a little bit of help. Taylor misses, but we'll keep it here. Radford and Taylor just missed two shots, which brings their shooting percentage down to about 73. Paul on the floor against Vanderbilt. In the regular season, Vanderbilt made six, um, excuse me, the Aggies made six threes per game at about 32%. They don't rely heavily on it, but I still trust the stroke of Taylor, Radford, Dexter Dennis looks good coming off. Oh boy, Radford, they have done that now a couple times, this time with Mignon playing defense. There's not a better special teams coach in the country than Buzz Williams, and it's the second time that he's gone to his big physical card and just throw it up and let him absolutely just whip you in front of the rim. Buzz told me earlier this year when he first started as a head coach back at Marquette, he had a special team that on every baseline out of bounds under defensive situation, they automatically checked themselves in. He would put his five best defensive players on the floor covering out of bounds plays no matter what the situation. That's a call. Oh, yes, and here goes Washington. This is an easy two. Another guy with a lot of pop, man. Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year out of Carver High School in New Orleans. The number one thing he has had since day one as a freshman is he has a motor. 13 in white. Oh, Smith knocks out. Three down. We're going to get a foul on Washington. So the basket, you know, they, very honest, probably could have gone either way. At the end of the day, they felt like just a hard physical checkout. We should ask Melora Brown what he thought. Yeah. <laughs> Let him have a look at the monitor. He'll tell you. <laughs> I, I still have a great appreciation for teams that will get called once a half for a hard, physical, hit-first mentality when the ball's in the air. Kind of teams win in March. Let me tell you, we're learning a lot about you this half with the compliance and everything that you're kind of showing your, your colors. What it takes to play on Jimmy Dyke's team. Dennis's shot is short. He'll follow it. And that one's oh. not short. Just such a good all-around player. You can literally stick him on anybody, Dexter Dennis. He wants the guy that's hurting the Aggies on the offensive end. After every media timeout, he'll tell coach, put me on it. I can take him out. One more defensive player of the year. Green, and that sets up Thomas for a three that doesn't get there. They may throw a half a hundred on him if they can get another basket here in the last eight seconds. Not only can Vanderbilt not afford to lose this game, they certainly can't afford to lose it as bad as they have looked so far in this first half. A rare miss at the buzzer by Taylor. Uh, you used the correct term, Ravi. It was a walk. There was no stopping, and he wasn't terribly interested in discussing that first half with me, and I can't say I blame him. He did say the goal is to get it to 10 by 10 minutes. They're a very hot shooting team in that first half. We just got to find a way to slow them down. That was the extent of the conversation. Yep. I did offer a thank you. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they start off with a turnover as the second half is underway. Alabama is waiting for the winner of this one for tomorrow's SEC Tournament Championship at 1 o'clock. If more teams played with the effort that Marty Smith does his job, they would be in great shape on Selection Sunday. And I'm not kidding. Yeah, no, I know That guy not. works. He hustles non-stop man at this tournament from huddle to huddle sprinting back to check on things marty is a grinder of all grinders Ooh, good pass there and the foul and we're going to have free throws make sure marble is okay got banged there but that is like banging marble yes it is well you have to see i would expect a massive effort by vanderbilt these first five or six minutes 
And they can't understand how important this game is for Vanderbilt. Yes. You know, A&M's in. They know that. They're going to be a pretty high seed. Vanderbilt wins today, and it changes. Joe Lenardi said if they win this game, I'll, I'll put them in, and then we'll wait to see what happens around the country. But if you don't win today, you have no chance to win tomorrow, and they are in a big, big hole. A&M started this thing like a house of fire, and it just kept burning. Well, what a job Stack has done with his ball club. Yeah. I mentioned it on January 31st. They got beat 101 to 44 at Alabama And it was not looking good. They won 10 of 11 cents And that's when you find out a lot about yourself as a head coach and a lot about your program and they have made Quite a charge to make a case to be in that NCAA tournament have made up a ton of ground Just not convinced that that resume is strong enough yet to say that they're definitely in They got 18 19 minutes left to prove everyone wrong. Yeah, Mignon throws that up, and it's, again, denied at the rim. Yeah, you saw the numbers. The other number that's important for Vanderbilt, the administration investing in basketball. Yes. Both men's and women's. I told you this afternoon on the walkover. Whatever job opening is out there right now, St. John's, Georgetown, Texas Tech, the next NBA job, I'm calling Jerry Stackhouse. Every coach in this league will tell you the same thing. He's, he just has a gift to see the game. His kids have not played well today against a red hot Aggie team. Chandler stays red hot. He knocks in another two, and that one is dropped, and that's a tough shot to contested three for Colin Smith. Just remember what Stack told Marty. Can we get it to 10 with 10 to go? Still within reach, but they've got to find some defensive guts about him right now and lock down AM for a two and a half, three minute stretch. That will stay with AM. And pleading his case is Jordan Wright. That guy. I'm not as big as that guy, and I didn't jump as high as he did. <laughs> Is that a stack bobblehead? Yeah, just, oh, yes, absolutely. it is. That is. Bradford's three. Wide open. That's too strong. Another offensive rebound. The size of AM has been a problem all day. Quick double team, and they're able to get out of it. Dennis brought that ball down. They still got two to shoot it. Taylor, oh, he went to pass it when there was two seconds left on the shot clock. And Raptors like, we had no time left for you to pass it to me. Yeah, one of the few mistakes that Wade Taylor has made in this game. The only thing good for Buzz Williams on that was they took a full minute off the clock because of the offensive rebound they got. 50 seconds, whatever, close. Six offensive rebounds on their 12 misses. Right, pretty play there, yeah. That's more of what Jordan Wright has done all season long. Getting an isolation play and mismatch because you got to respect his three point shot. He's really, really good and tight with the ball driving downhill. Got some spin about him at the end. Taylor throws it up and he will shoot the free throws. Take a look at Wright. He got his defender. Henry Coleman on his hip, and then he spun him. Well, and Buzz Williams told Marty going off at the half that where Vanderbilt has hurt us offensively is in the middle part of the floor. And Jerry Stackhouse sees the game the same way. And you've got to keep the ball in the middle third against Buzz's team. Because they are so good at keeping you trapped on the side, forcing you down to the help where the rotation is always built, waiting for you. Yeah, those free throw misses. Another reminder, too, a lot of folks love this week. Conference tournament championships. We'll have to see how Marcus Sasser is after he appeared to hurt his groin significantly. Houston, Cincinnati, Memphis, and Tulane. 315 Eastern Time tomorrow, the championship game. Man, it looks like Houston is certainly going to be a participant. They are up very comfortably right now over Cincinnati, but the big story there, the Sasser injury. Good high arcing floater. That one is converted by Lawrence. I think Vanderbilt's got to extend their defense, and Jerry Stackhouse sees the same thing now starting to pick up. He's got to change the complexion of the game 
He cannot just continue to throw fastballs at Texas a &M. Good job with active hands for the turnover. Right. He sees the lane. He takes it right at Radford. Throws it up, and it's going to be a foul. Now, a little more energy right now from Vanderbilt, and the crowd behind their bench is into it. There you go. Foul on Tyrese Radford. Well, he's going to go to his diamond press. Doesn't take you watching too much basketball to know what that hand signal stands for. After this free throw make, it will be a three-quarter court, full court press by Vanderbilt. Again, you've got to change the game as a head coach right now and give your guys a chance. You're down 20. You're trying to get it to 10 with 10 to go. Your defense has to change. Give yourself a chance. Right, 75% free throw shooter knocks them both down. They got it now under 20. Here's the press. There's the diamond action. Going to get a hard trap. You got to attack it now if you're a &M. Make them pay for it to the extension. Shots that were falling in the first are not falling now, and they're going to get Coleman over the CAA tournament. This is unfinished business here for Texas A&M. They've they're in the tournament now. They got to win this one. Yeah, they came with one purpose to cut down the nets in Nashville. And remember, Texas A&M beat Alabama on the last Saturday of regular season. So they have the pieces of the puzzle how to do it. Can they get there and finish this thing off with 15:35 to go? Coleman, yep, man open in the corner is Dennis. Another empty trip for AM. And finally, Vanderbilt has as many makes in this game as turnovers. 13 makes, 13 turnovers. They're out of the deficit. Mm. Big time. Yeah, and a big time three. Colin Smith, one quick step to his left, and he knocked it down. Big shots this season. He can make him in bunches and now gain pressure although the lead is still big gain pressure on the Aggies You can just feel it in Bridgestone Arena With plenty of time left to get to that down 10 with 10 minutes to go for Jerry Stackhouse and his game plan So dangerous as Vanderbilt and knocking down threes They are very similar to a Missouri team that can take and make guarded threes Tyron Lawrence from the deep corner with a shot that feels like it was worth more than three points just from a momentum confidence standpoint 12-1 run and a Foul out top on Jordan right Quentin Melora Brown Jimmy has gone to the bench the last time that happened Is when the Aggies really took advantage of the height advantage that they had well, then he's going to have to fight. They're going to have to defend without fouling. Last night, AM got to the bonus at the 14 minute mark of the second half. They are so good. Best in the nation at getting free throw attempts because of how hard they drive that ball. There it is again. Crowd here has moved to the side of Vanderbilt. Obviously, there's a bunch of folks from Nashville rooting for them. The last three whistles. And not outside the arc. I mean, it's a simple call, right? It is to Doug Shuss, but not to the people in the seats who aren't paying attention to the arc. <laughs> see, he, doesn't, he didn't see the arc. No. Arc. It, no rain. No, no rain in here. We don't have any water. We don't need an arc. We don't know what arc you're talking about as Radford knocks that down. Three fouls on this possession in the last 10 seconds. Ravi, Texas a and they get 19 points a game from the free throw strike. And it's game after game after game. They pound away off the bounce, not the interior passing, playing with strength. And they've got seven tonight. And they find another open shot and another three. Texas a and you have to make Vanderbilt beat you from the twos right now. Onion takes it hard. We're going to get a foul on a and It looks like it's going to be against Garcia. Boy, is he quick when he decides to change direction. It's like trying to stay in front of a squirrel. 
mean, his shiftiness and his speed, <laughs> a whole other level. And by the way, if anybody's got experience about trying to stay in front of a squirrel, it's me. It's you. <laughs> You have a nightmarish flashback. Little, little squirrel problem last year at the bike shop. <laughs> Covered on Selection Sunday. This is where you got to be. ESPN College Basketball Live starts today. Reese and the company look at the men's field, the 68. Bracketology, breakdowns of each region. 8 o'clock, we'll switch to the women's side. Their field, the 68, gets revealed. Continuing coverage on the U at 9. And at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, even more coverage of the brackets. So enjoy it all. Streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Layup inside, finger roll from Radford. Radford always, for the most part, runs on the right side in transition so he can catch it and get to his left hand strong. Another long play. That finds the bottom. Back within 14. Remember the goal. Can you get it to 10 at the 10-minute mark? And they are tracking it right now. Boy, they are tough though inside, aren't they? Coleman. That's his money play. Coleman catching that ball at the left elbow, driving right. Jordan Wright's feeling it. Little up fake there. He got Taylor off the ground. Five out offense by Vanderbilt. And this match on the inside. Too hard, too strong, but there he is, Wright knocking down threes, and now following up the miss. And there's the mismatch. They didn't throw it to Wright initially, but he has a mismatch on the offensive glass. I love the fight back by Vanderbilt. And they get another stop. Gordon, tough pass and a turnover. And Wright pushing it right at Radford. He got hit, he laid it up, no good, but he will shoot two. Boy, Jordan Wright is feeling it right. Believing they were in Vanderbilt this year when they entered February 10 and 12. A&M was 15 and 6. As the free throw drops. They got to the final game feeling pretty good about themselves. Then lost to Tennessee and they did not hear their name called on Sunday. And I, I thought they would be the last team in. Yeah. They ended up being the first team out. And a year ago today, there's what A&M looked like with a net of 51 and Okay, to think the 50. That net is a little bit of a concern if you're Vanderbilt with a net of 79, considering the highest net to get in that large so far in the last five years, St. John's in 2019 with a net of 73. Right there with 10 minutes to go, down 10. Jerry Stackhouse's guys continue to track. Offensive foul called on Coleman. And another turnover, and here is that 10-point window he talked about arriving at the gate a little early, maybe. Absolutely it is. Jet reference for you. Yeah, the desperation, the effort is just what you would expect out of Vanderbilt. And for Texas A&M, guard that three ball. Continue to make Vanderbilt drive it, make tough twos. They cannot let a hot shooting team get hot. Go screen for Studi. That's left. And rebound. He eats basketballs off the window as Garcia. Studi's got to make shots. He has not shot it well at all in this tournament in the last two days. There's a pass down low. That's going to be a foul on Studi. And two free throws coming up for Coleman. Yeah, those bigs of Aggies in transition offense, they punish you at the rim. They run and seek contact off that early duck in. And they get that duck in within the first five or six seconds of the possession. Right there with Tennessee in terms of how they design their run game. Five of nine from the free throw stripe. And that one misses. And here you go with an opportunity again to get it to 10. My point about Studi, he's two out of 20 in this building overall. One out of 16 from three. And he shake loose and make one. There's one, and it rattled halfway down. Amazing. A guy that good is now one out of 17 from the three-point line in this tournament. Taylor hard to the rack, soft touch off the window, Wade Taylor. He is a point guard that will fix the problem before the coach has to fix the problem. Right penetrates, spins, finger roll, and 
If it weren't for Jordan Wright, they wouldn't be this close at all. He's got 15 now. Jerry Stackhouse just turned his best player loose before that Aggie defense can get set. Mm, Taylor! And a tough silences a run by the opponent better than this guy, and he's done it game after game all year long, Wade Taylor. 35%. Three-point shooter, and today four of six to lead the way with 17. His running mate in the backcourt, Boots Radford, has 14. Marbles got 11. But on the other side, Vanderbilt has got themselves back into this thing. And Wright has really shot them back that way. And here he goes again, firing up another three. No good. And that's the biggest challenge when you're down by so many. You can't afford empty trips. Wright's got 15 for Vanderbilt. 13 of the 15 points this half and a hold by Wright. As Taylor was cutting and he goes right into the band right now for Texas A&M. Lead back up to 15 points. And trying to fend off a very game Vanderbilt team in an effort to come from behind like they did against Arkansas last night. You talk about the confidence that has grown in Wade Taylor since he started playing college basketball to where he is right now Well, his shot selection got better from his last year to this year and The confidence grows when you start seeing the game as a coach and I said earlier that this kid fixes the problem before the coach has to That's what great point guards do either with their play with their voice Settling guys down kicking guys in the backside when they need it his voice in the huddle is growing along with his confidence. If your point guard is silence and compounds the problem instead of fixing the problem, it is a long, long year. Yeah. He has their last seven. They set that play up beautifully, and Wright just cannot knock it down. He's frustrated with himself. Wide open three, and you've got to cash in. When you're down 17. Oh, down low, that's too easy. Marble oh, yeah. muscled his man, Smith, right out of the way. Well, your point about when Vanderbilt has to go small, they just have no answer on the inside with Robbins out for the year. Very impressed with both Coleman and Marble, how quick they are with their shoulders. When they make a move, man, they they don't play in mud or sand. They, they get it and go. Hot, quick feet on the box. Play a game warning on Marble. He slapped the ball away after he's dunked it. That little cold spell, A&M has made five in a row. Onion, yep, he's going to get Dennis to foul him, so he'll shoot two at the free throw line. Amazing, Jimmy, though. At one point, was it 12? Yes, it was. Back up to 19. Here you go. Monday night at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We'll have the Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball series finale. It looks at the years 2012 through 2022. John Calipari's continued success at Kentucky, Vic yep. Schaefer, Mississippi State. Make it the consecutive national championship games, and the basketball world says goodbye to the legend Pat Summit. Man, you got some Pat Summit experiences, don't you? Yeah, she was. Uh, got to watch her practice a few times. When I was there to cover the, the men's team, I'd go early to watch her team's practice and spend about a week with her in the WNBA playoffs. As fierce of a competitive person as I've ever been around. Florence lays that up and in. After a couple of misses from AM, 16 points. Stackhouse told Marty on a quick walk from the locker room, I need it to be at 10 with 10 to go. And they had it to 12. And that guy's just ruined everything that Vanderbilt had planned. <laughs> Wade Taylor knocks in another two. Every time I say Wade Taylor's the best point guard in the league, I get a little pushback on social media. Every now and then when I look at it. But I'm telling you, he's the best point guard in this league, this kid with the ball. For all that he does, just a winner. He's got 21, the spin move, no way. Yes, sir, 23. 
Is he the best point guard in the country? <laughs> he's, he's, he's quickly growing on that list as well. <laughs> That's a charge. <laughs> Anderson Garcia is down on the ground. There was a lot of body parts that made contact with him. Ravi, sometimes when the game gets close in March, you just put the ball in your best player's hands and say, we trust you to make the right play and the right read. Because he just got completely separation from a really good small defender in Manion. Had nothing to do with it. A little bigger, a little more physical, just as fast, just as quick. He is going to be a problem in that NCAA tournament. He's got 14 of those 23 in the second half. He's made five of six. I asked Buzz Williams, I said, do you have the best point guard in the SEC? His answer was, we have the best point guard for the Aggies in terms of how we play, and I love it. Aiden Hefner into the act with his three. Just like that, it's back up to 21, and it's slipping quickly away from Vanderbilt. And that switch to deny defense by Texas A&M is so hard to break the code what you're going to do against it. I think you've got to screen it a little bit more. you got to get real aggressive going downhill against it. The two seed. Ario Speedwagon. Oh. We all know it's Bachman Turner Overdrive. Yeah, of course. Like They're testing you. Everybody on the streets in Nashville know that. Great music in this town. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Everywhere you turn, somebody with a guitar singing That's like they right. deserve a record deal. <laughs> that is true. No, literally everywhere you turn, somebody's got a guitar. Yes. <laughs> and they're good at it. They're great at it. What a place for this tournament to be, though. Huh? So fan-friendly, so much to do. Walking distance downtown. A lot of Big Blue Nation got sent home early. Uh, normally, over the years, been the Kentucky Invitational Tournament has changed over the last few years. With right, There you go. Not looking very happy right oh, now. Oh, they're hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> Do they look happy, Ron? <laughs> Four of Will Wade's field goals this half have answered a Vanderbilt score. I'm sorry. Say that again. Four of Wade Taylor's <laughs> field you. goals this half have answered Vanderbilt scores. And Will Wade on your mind now. <laughs> Why don't you just lay out for a few minutes? Lawrence, that ball was blocked by Hefner. Oh, the rip. And he'll go shoot two. Good effort by Quentin Melora Brown. Now, the idea that Vandy had all this momentum, not today, but as Buzz said during the into halftime interview with Marty they've won 10 of 11 true they went 11 and 7 in conference which was amongst the best of all the teams in the conference they had their second 20 win season in their last 11 and I think the point that Buzz was making of the power five conferences UCLA and Houston are better winning percentage than Vandy that's it since February 1 yeah, that's it they've been one hot team and they came from way back off the radar to put themselves right in the middle of the radar coming into the day. It just felt like that this was still one win away from Vanderbilt being in that NCAA tournament. And Joe Lenardi is so good now. He's got a feel for what he thinks the committee will do. They were one of the first four out prior to this tip. They need something special oh. to happen. Good interior passing there. Just lost at the rim by Coleman. Yeah, Lenardi is to bracketology, you know, what all these musicians are here in Nashville to singing. He is the maestro. As that three is dropped by Lawrence from the corner. When you watch Vanderbilt play and you see the teams that they have beaten in this league, the Kentuckys, the Tennessees, mm -hmm. Alabamas, you know that they can play with anyone out there. But they stumbled early in non-conference play. Tough. Lost to Grambling, although Grambling pretty good in their home conference this year, but... Just fell off the radar, but man, have they been hot in the month of February? To your point, 
He's not convinced they're going to get there. Hefner fires again. That is a pure stroke. Get out a needle in Texas. Hayden Hefner. He is more than a shooter, though. You've seen him today drive the ball some. He's an active defender down here. Pretty play there. The reverse layup by Magnon. You can see why he has been so good in the last month. The speed and the, the slipperiness. He has tremendous wiggle to his game going both directions. Makes hard layups. He's the co-owner of his own clothing line. You know that? I did notice that. Yeah. Here he comes. Maybe a two-on-one. Takes it himself and lays it up and in. And he is a one-man fast break. And you get it to 10 with four to go. That's probably the next goal for Jerry Stackhouse. They need a flurry right now to get there. That last media timeout, how close can you get it to single digits and give yourself some hope? Make sure the Aggies don't turn it over, right? Just have clean possessions right now, if nothing else. If you have a turnover, make it a dead ball turnover. Don't let Vanderbilt score off of a live one. Ratburn all the way to the hole and throws it up and he'll get fouled. And, you know, the blessing is that they've done this. The curse is they've done it without Wade Taylor on the floor, and he's about to check back in. He is as good of any point guard out there. I'm not saying he's the best point guard in the country because there's some tremendous ones out there, but... In terms of his value to his team and embracing with blind faith how Buzz Williams wants his guys to play. Perfect fit in College Station. I mean, who, who got to you? You kind of changed the whole way. Taylor, best point guard out there, to He may not be the best. No, best in this league. Oh, okay. But you're asking me best, best in the country? He's right there with him. But he's the best in this league. You okay? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Do I look okay, Ron? <laughs> we might need to tell people what that's in reference to, by the way. Ooh, behind the back. How about those moves? And he can't get it to go. And Hefner rips down the rebound. Former LSU head coach Will Wade was asked a question after a game in which his team lost. And his response was to the questioner, whose name was Ron, was, Do I look happy, Ron? <laughs> and we showed it 787 times. Brady oh, cut. cut. Yeah. Pull and pass. Ooh. Lawrence with a little extra mustard on that flush. Full court press not as hot right now with Jerry Stackhouse. He had it going there when they were making a push. He then made the adjustment. I'm just trusting his half court defense, but man, you can count the number of possessions left with four minutes to go. Out of bounds. Off A and M. What a day, right? The Big 12 championship coming up later. The ACC championship, the Pac-12. Kansas right now in Alabama in an absolute fist fight for who's going to be the overall number one seed. UCLA on the West Coast trying to regroup for a, a deep run without their best defender, Jalen Clark. ACC right, five teams being projected right now. This league is so hard to officiate, Ravi, because the size of the athletes, the explosiveness, the physicality. I watch the team, yes. like the ACC, that's an easier league to officiate because it's much more of a finesse league. Today, 9 and 16. This is next level stuff right here from Mike, our stat guy. About 218 seconds left in this game. If AM uses about 20 seconds per possession, Bandy uses 15 seconds per, per possession. Vanderbilt only is going to have about seven possessions left in this game. Watch out. Boy, and there's a yep. rip right there and a layup. And a lot of contact on that play, but Jordan right with the steal after Gordon got a little loose with it. And to my point about the number of possessions that are left for Vanderbilt, AM cannot have live ball turnovers. That's the only way Vanderbilt 
fight their way back in this thing. Here it is, Wade Taylor. No sir. Offensive rebound. What a Got job it. by the guy who we talked about. <laughs> Anderson Garcia. Active hands by Vanderbilt playing with desperation. Good job by Jordan Wright to come in from behind on the backside. Rakes the arms down but gets the ball and rips the other way. That was a classic rip and strip. Look at Garcia. So good, man. It Sealing off the weak side with his lower body, not at a pushing match with his upper body. He whips you from the waist down and just eats rebounds on the weak side. And a miss here and a three point make by Vanderbilt. Yep, and this Bridgestone Arena is going to come to life. Missed them both. Hefner had that one ripped away, and there's the chance for Vanderbilt. I'm telling you, if the three ball drops, gonna get nervous in here. Studi thought about it. There's the kick. Oh, we're not slipping, and the ball on the ground. It's loose, still loose. AM came away with it. Orange tried hard. Garcia. He lost it. That's a blown opportunity. Back the other way. Goal pending is called. Solomon Washington, you talk about his athleticism. We can't check. We're not under two, but Solomon Washington, to your point, man, Woo. active on one hand. I mean, his head is rim high. The game pressure is still on Texas A&M. Plenty of time right now. Buzz Williams is going to come with the substitutions of Boots Radford. And Coleman comes in for Washington, going back with his experience. An 11 point game, 2 minutes 22 seconds to go. AM's largest lead was 27 in this game. It's at 11 now. I want 4 and 23 to handle this ball the entire possession, right? Those two guards. Old, tough, strong, make free throws. Bradford with eight on the shot clock. Garcia. Pretty move. Lays it up short. It'll stay, but Garcia is a magnet with that basket. Buzz Williams brings Dexter Dennis, the defensive specialist, into the game. Sends Gordon to the bench. Right, Lewis, three-point threats for Vanderbilt, both on the floor. An 8-0 run right now. Wright decides to kick it. Bad pass. Wow. Last two trips down, two turnovers for Vanderbilt. Ball on the ground, shall say, and they call time. Wander two opportunities. It stays 11. Bradford will inbounds for AM. And fight hard right now after Vanderbilt. Deny everything, try to run through a pass, gamble. Good job by Wade Taylor to make a second cut. Dennis with five on the shot clock. Step back. Pretty yeah. shot. Defensive specialist comes up with a huge two-point shot to put him up 13 with a minute to go. Right for the rebound, and he got fouled. And that feels like it's going to be it for the Aggies of AM and Buzz Williams in what has been an outstanding season. Looking for their 25th victory overall. How about the shot by Dexter Dennis? Yes. Call him a glue guy. He's got seven points. Also look at his seven rebounds, three assists, 26 minutes. And that last pull-up mid-range game just knocks the defense back just enough to get himself separation straight up, straight down. Such an important piece to this Texas A&M squad. I know the motor is weighed and... Boots Radford, but man, you've got to have key pieces around your two guards, and Dexter Dennis is one of them. Well, we know this Alabama's going to have to shoot a lot better from the outside if they're going to 
hang with A&M yeah. tomorrow after what we saw today. Young lays it in. Year long has been Alabama, but nipping up their heels have been the Aggies. We're 40 seconds away from seeing one versus two tomorrow. As does everything well, a 77% free throw shooter. He's able to knock down the first. Yeah, you get some. Uh, Thoughts about tomorrow's game people can look forward to as they get set for it tomorrow. Well, when the game starts, Alabama's going to have the best talent on the floor with Brandon Miller. But you're going to have an A&M squad that they have the code how to beat Alabama. They did it the last Saturday of regular season play in College Station. And Alabama didn't play great, but they did get it down to, I believe, a one-possession game in that second half. There'll be two tremendous teams fighting for an SEC tournament title tomorrow. This is the problem, though, for the Aggies. This guy is 6'9". Now, can you get physical with him? a has got the athletes and the belief and the DNA and the culture to get into this guy's body. But this guy has really grown, Ravi. When the game gets physical, he's been able to play through it really well. And what motivation will buzz this guy will try to cut down the nets in Alabama coming off of the loss last Saturday and trying to hang on to that overall number one seed how, how, how good is Brandon Miller just continues to grow you, know, you think about Jabari Smith last year for Auburn and how great he was yeah, yeah. this guy's better better he's better with the ball he's a better passer he affects the game more Jabari Smith was tremendous with the turnaround jump shots and the elbow plays, but in terms of a guy with a ball making plays off the bounce as a passer, I told Commissioner Sankey that Brandon Miller's as good of a talent that I've seen in this league in the last 15, 20 years in that true freshman class. Think about the guys that have had success at the next level coming out of this conference. Tyler Hero recently, of course, Grant Williams recently, and they've, they've had really, really good success. Miller is an ideal what appears to be an ideal nba player he is the perfect fit for an nba three man a, bi a big wing that can shoot it drive it dribble it pass you, it and you put him on the nba floor rally where the floor is so much more opened up because everybody has gravity abilities a shooter you can't help off the gaps are bigger to attack he's a high impact guy in his first year in the nba brandon miller next year Lawrence knocks down a three. Just cut the deficit a little bit, but there's only 27 seconds left to go. Our game tomorrow will tip at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN, the championship game. Alabama won it a couple of years ago. Well, this game was delivered a knockout punch in the first half by Texas a What, they shoot 70% in yeah. the first half? Early Texas on. Them. Yes, sir. A&M will go back to the championship game. They lost last year to Tennessee, 65-50, got off to a terrible start in that game. They will try to avoid that tomorrow against Alabama. They win it, 87-75.